When researching a wheel purchase, you may have heard terms like VIA, JWL, TUV, but what do they mean and should they affect your wheel purchase? We're gonna talk about it right now. So what's going on? I'm Scott from Koenig, and in purchasing your wheels, you may have heard some of these terms that we just mentioned before, and you may say, what are they? They're wheel standards, and when we talk about wheel standards, people tend to get confused, and we're gonna to try to put that all into perspective. Let's start with why are there wheel standards? Well, it should be pretty evident. Basically, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to come up with a bar or a threshold that we're trying to exceed and put wheel manufacturers on a playing field where you know that you're getting a level of quality and durability, and we're doing that by trying to come up with these standards that we're building wheels too. And so that gets a little tricky, it gets a little convoluted, and some people have gotten used to using certain wheel standards as almost a benchmark for this is a level of quality. If you are not this tall, you may not ride the roller coaster. But it's not always that clear cut. So when it comes to wheel standards, I think one of the trickiest things and the most misleading pieces of wheel standards is that people tend to think that all of them are applicable everywhere you are, and that's not the case. A lot of these standards are built for specific regions, and that may be, in fact, why your wheel doesn't have that particular standard or certification, because it may not be required in the area where you're gonna be buying or using your wheel. For example, if you are in North America, you may be looking for a wheel and really set on making sure that you're finding one that has a TUV certification. But if you're not in Germany, do you need that TUV certification? So standards are basically set to ensure that the wheel has proper structural rigidity, quality, and durability. There, there are applicable load standards for certain targeted vehicles, ultimately protecting the vehicle's occupants by making sure that the wheel quality and the wheel standards that you are required or should have for that vehicle is met or exceeded. Before we go any further, I think this disclaimer is really relevant. You've heard me say it before, wheels are not bulletproof. They're metal, not magic. At some point with any catastrophic load or something super significant, you could encounter wheel damage. And there are gonna be certain provisions that maybe a manufacturer may take that will make certain wheels or certain designs stronger, but you should understand that no matter what we do in this situation, a wheel is not gonna be impenetrable to a force that exceeds what that wheel is capable of. Let's talk about one of the most popular standards that is out there, especially if you're into Japanese wheels, and that is the JWL standard. JWL stands for Japan Light Wheel Alloy. And essentially what that is, is basically a wheel that has been designed for passenger cars and is essentially set up for the Japanese market. Why is this important? Because you may buy a wheel that doesn't have JWL stamped on it. Does that mean that it's any lesser or quality? Uh, not necessarily, because JWL is a standard that is meant for Japan. So the reason why JWL is so popular and the reason why so many manufacturers are trying to build to the JWL standard is because it's become globally accepted as one of the more stringent standards that are out there on the market. Interesting enough, JWL, just because a wheel is stamped there, doesn't necessarily mean that that manufacturer actually made the wheel to JWL standards. I know it gets a little tricky. Stay with me for a second. When it comes down to the JWL standard, there is no requirement that says that it has to be certified. So what they're saying is here's our testing standards. And theoretically, a manufacturer, if they build to those standards and test in-house and do their own testing, they are allowed to stamp the wheel JWL and basically self-assure that that wheel has been passed and exceeds the JWL standard. And that brings us into our next testing standard, which is the VIA testing standard. Now VIA stands for Vehicle Inspection Association, and it's a Japanese certification center to be able to certify and test wheels, not only to the VIA standard, but also to make sure that they are stamped and registered. Now the one thing to note about VIA that's different than JWL, VIA only allows you to stamp their logo on a wheel when it has been registered and has passed their certification. Now when it comes to VIA, uh, this is a globally accepted standard that really has uh, kind of permeated throughout the wheel industry. And just because it's in Japan, you will find manufacturers that maybe don't even sell in Japan that actually go through the process of getting wheels certified. And it's their way of basically instilling confidence in the rest of the world that their product really does meet and live up to this standard. 
So let's talk about one of the most important standards if you live in North America, and that is SAE J2530. This is a SAE standard. SAE has developed a lot of global popularity uh, for accepted automotive standards for anything automotive related. They're also one of the globally certified standards of technicians and qualified repair professionals. Now, most quality manufacturers are going to build to this standard. Now, you may start to say, what is the difference between all of these standards, right? But bottom line is these standards don't have one that's gonna be the best out of all of them. And you're gonna hear a lot of people argue about this. They're gonna say, this is the most stringent standard. This is the most tough standard to pass. This is, it really depends. And it depends on your wheel, depends on your design. And it also depends on exactly what the intended use for the wheel is. So don't let wheel standards scare you from not making a purchase. Quality and being able to make sure that you're dealing with a good manufacturer that has a good reputation. Referring to JE2530, uh, you should understand that this is an involuntary standard, which means that the manufacturers that are based here in the US or the manufacturers that are bringing wheels to the US, it's at their discretion whether they wanna even build to this standard. Now, now most quality manufacturers are going to build to this standard. Do the research, it's out there, it's a much better way to go, but understand that these testing standards, especially if they're legit, they do bring credibility to the wheel to know that that manufacturer has taken the time to make sure that that wheel is safe and passes all the quality that you should expect to keep your occupants safe. Let's get into the last standard that we're gonna to cover today, and that is TUV. Now, TUV is a standard that is self-certified by TUV. You do have to send your wheel or send each wheel to be tested by TUV or a TUV certified facility. But what they are doing while they're testing the wheel, they're also registering the wheel, meaning they're keeping track of each wheel manufacturer, each wheel design, and what vehicles they're approved to go on. When it comes down to living in Germany and some of the European countries that really follow the TUV standard, they're really closely associating this wheel to the particular vehicle that it's going on, which means they're really considering what load rating is and, and different aspects of that wheel to the actual vehicle that you intend to purchase them for. And, and this is important, I think, in Germany and some of these European countries because they have really harsh winters. They have really bad roads. And in addition to that, it's one of those things where you have certain road standards in Germany, like the Autobahn system, that doesn't have speed limits. So they know that, and that is why they're so strict on automotive parts and making sure that they exceed these things especially for particular vehicle applications. All right, so we hope we didn't bore you. We hope we kept this concise enough. We wanted to make sure that we kind of went into most of the popular wheel testing standards that are available on the market today so that you understood when they were applicable to you and when you should stress making sure that you have them. If you have any other questions, throw them down below. We'll also have an article that will be up on our website. If you want to see some charts or something like that, that's it for this one. We will catch you in the next one.